Good morning, Rock of Grace. Are we ready for a move of the Holy Spirit today? Would you stand with us? Boy, it is good to see. I see some faces we haven't seen in a long time, and you are so welcome. It's so awesome to have you back. Are we ready to worship him? When you 
runs for cover When you move and no one's turned away Cause when you are fear turns into praises And when Justice roll on like a river. Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. When you move, the outcast finds a family. Listen to these words. And when you this first verse again and I just that word justice can we just close our eyes that word justice I feel like there's many of you in this congregation that I think of there has been injustice done to me God is the God of justice and he's pouring out his mercy and his healing. And we prayed this morning as a worship team, almost in tears, that God would draw people who needed spiritual healing today. So if you have that brokenness and you're trying to worship and you're trying to sing these words, God, we ask for and we thank you for your presence in this place that the God of justice and the God of mercy and the God who heals and redeems and makes us clean and white as snow is in the room right now. Holy Spirit, come. Can we just say those words, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. When you move, Darkness runs for cover When you move No one's turned away
Justice roll on like a river. Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. Let's sing this over our nation. So come, move, let justice roll on like a river. Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. Jesus the King. up holy hands in this place. Can we just lift up our hands this morning? We lift up holy hands in the presence of the Lord. And over every battle, over every battle this morning, come on, just picture the battle. Picture the battle at stake because all of us are in a war, in a battle. You might be more of in a time of rest than somebody else, but as a family, we are in a season of war. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a
sing a little louder 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 Come on Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder second row right here can we all lift our extend our arms this way right in front of pastor ed lady in the second row right here i just want to make sure that you hear that this is over you if you could just tap her shoulder make sure she, can you look at me ma'am make sure i know it's you yes amen we speak It's almost hard for me to say this. I saw a bunch of arrows pointed at you. And then I saw this insane shield rise up around you and deflect literally every arrow. And we speak over the destiny and the call on your life as a woman of God Almighty, as a warrior called by his name, called to sing his praises, called to speak his word. And I just, I just feel like the enemy sees the call on your life and has been trying to discourage and been trying to throw literally. If you said there was a tax before, it's been like everything at once. And you said, I can hardly handle it. And I can hardly lift my voice to sing or, or speak. And the Lord says, I, I am your defender. I am fighting for you. I am here. He's here now in the times that you thought you were alone. He says, you are my daughter, my precious, beautiful daughter, and I'm not going to let arrows hit you anymore. God, we speak the tenderness, the love, and mercy of Jesus over our sister who is called to fight for the king. That she would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the king of glory is rising up a shield. He is your shield. I believe that's in scripture. It says he is your shield. He was a protector. God, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, the King. You reign on high. You reign on high. Victorious. Jesus, we submit to you. Whatever you want to do, Jesus. Whatever we want to do, Jesus. Move, Holy Spirit. I see somebody with like a, a big bump on your arm, like that tightens up so you can't even, you can't even, I believe it's something to do with wrenches. You used to work on vehicles or do something in your, 
the, the muscles and the tendons in your arm get so tight that you can't even do what you love to do anymore. And we just speak healing over your arm in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by his blood. Thank you, Jesus. I see somebody who hasn't been able to sleep. You were, you were sleeping fine, and then in the last month, but everybody's saying it's getting back to normal, and your sleep has been anything but normal. I believe it's a woman, and you're a mom. And you're saying, I just need my rest. If I just can get my night's rest, if I could just get my sleep, then, then I'll be able to function. And Jesus, Jesus is going to give you beautiful, perfect, full night's rest, but he's also going to empower you to do what you can't do on your own. overwhelming weight. Keep playing that, PJ. Can we just, I know if you're not comfortable with this, if you're new to church, sometimes the Holy Spirit moves and and sometimes we'll do a songs in order and sometimes the Holy Spirit says wait and sometimes there's prophetic words like just that just happened over people and it's, and if it seems strange to you, it's okay. God's just moving. And so right now, can we just start, if you just start singing in the spirit, just start talking to the Lord, just start, just start, just start talking to him. Just start ministering to Jesus. Don't worry about us up here. Just start being in an atmosphere of prayer. as he said, wait, I just saw real clearly just this woman in the fourth row with the blonde hair and the nice necklace. Yeah. I just real loud. I just, during that whole last song, I just heard him say beauty for ashes. And could y'all just stretch your hands towards her? Uh, God has been, I mean, just really teaching you. And I know I don't think I've met you yet. I can't see you. These lights are really bright. So forgive me. But, um, I just, I just see you like looking behind you and seeing all these ashes. Like, Lord, what are you gonna do with that? And it's like, and then I notice your necklace and it's like God is saying, I am crowning you with beauty for ashes. I'm crowning you. I can take that mess behind you and I am making it beautiful. And he says, I'm just getting started. And you've already seen me work. I feel like in the last month, in the last month, right, you have really seen God work. And this is a really neat word. I've never said this in a word. God says to you, ma'am, I am just getting started. Like you've, you've not seen anything yet. In the last month in particular, you've looked back and said, wow, God, you're starting to make something beautiful of this. And it's like, it's like barely creaking the door open and you're excited about that little creak in the door. There's a whole new, you're gonna open that door and God has some amazing, powerful, beautiful things. I even see, I see new friendships. Uh, I see three women in particular coming to you often and strengthening you. And I see these three women just, just surrounding you, holding your arms and helping you through some of this stuff, right? From beyond, from, from the past and thank the Lord. God, I just bless her. Beauty for ashes. The Lord says, I am just getting started. In fact, I feel like this would be fun. Can we all prophesy to her? I want you all to say this with me. I'm just getting started, okay? I'm just getting started, all right? Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So we're going to end worship with something a little different. As you heard, we started Ain't No Grave. Anybody a Johnny know who Johnny Cash is in this place? This is a Johnny Cash song that he wrote right before he passed away after he, he got rocked by Jesus. So I don't know if I have the voice left to sing this this morning, but I could tell when we started that, that you know this song. So can we just do something? Everybody, addiction is a huge issue in our region. It's actually part of what we deal with. We know this, right, in our region. Can we just sing this song over those struggling with addiction? And, and if anybody have a family member, if anybody here who still struggles with that, we're going to believe that the blood of Jesus and the power of Jesus is going to overcome that. Amen? shame is a prison as cruel as a grave shame is a robber and he's come to take my name love is my redeemer lifting me up from the ground love is the power where my freedom song is found there ain't no grave down there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down verse 2 oh fear is a liar with a smooth and velvet tongue fear is a tyrant He's always telling me to run. Love is resurrection. Love is a trumpet sound. Come on. Love is my weapon. I'm going to take my giant down. Ain't no green. Going to hold my body down. There ain't no church when I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up out of the ground ain't no pain I'm gonna hold my body this last verse. Here we go. There was a battle, a war between death and life. And there on a tree, the Lamb of God was crucified. Oh, he went on down to hell. And he took back it. Come on, sing it.
Can we just wait? I know it's time. Can we just wait one second? Just wait one second. I, I feel this overwhelming feeling in my spirit that there's either somebody here or represented here, or maybe we'll watch online, that has been given basically a prognosis that you are have a terminal illness. And I'm telling you, God is still the healer today. I'm not going to have you raise your hand or anything like that, but can we as a church right now say that we believe in the power of the Almighty God, that there is no grave that is going to hold our body down, whether it's it's here when you return at the trumpet sound, God, we worship you in this place and we speak healing over every cancer. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing over every addiction. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing over every broken household represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say as a church at Rock of Grace that whether we lose our voice or not and whether we can make what we think is a pretty sound or not, you hear me, church? With me, it's singing. What is it with you? What is it with you that if, if, if you would, something would happen, like just happened to me where I lost my voice and I say, okay, well, I can't sing anymore. Yes, I can. What is it in your life? I feel that specifically over a woman. There's, there's some moms here that have said, this has been taken away. This struggles. So I, I can't do it now. There's no grave. There's no enemy that has power over God Almighty over your life, moms. I just want to speak over the Medorma family right now that you are a blessing, that you you are, God is literally fighting battles for you that you don't see, that, that, you, that you don't even know. That as you have children over to your home, including my children for parties, and, and it, it seems like a fun time that you are ministering the love of Jesus to them. God, thank you today as we close this portion of our worship, God, that it doesn't have to look the same every day. Thank you, God, for your spirit here. God, I thank you that you're in the details, Father. We're just going to come behind our family member again and just believe right now. Let's just pray for the Madormas, surrounding them as a family, a church family. God, we thank you. I just hear the Lord saying, just to piggyback on that, that he is in the details. He has worked out every detail, every detail. Lord, I just thank you. I just see papers, you know, that were signed and agreements made. But, Father, you were in every detail, even when it seemed like you weren't. Even when it seemed like you weren't, God, you were in every detail. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. If you're new here and you think, well, that was that was different. Where's the liturgy, you know? And where's, we, we have liturgy. It just comes in different times. And uh, we uh, believe, yeah, you may be seated. Um, we, we just believe that God wants to speak to you, and he works through uh, everybody, not just the worship team or the pastor. Uh, if someone comes up to you and encourages you, and, and that's the Lord encouraging you. Uh, I know I just had you sit down because half of you bailed on me. You just sat down, you know, wasn't ready for that. But um, I'm going to make you stand anyway because there's a lot of faces here that I am so excited to see. Oh, let me say one more thing before y'all greet and meet and meet and greet, however that goes. Um, I was like almost moved to tears back here today because I know some of your stories and some of the things you guys are going through. 
And some of you I've prayed with on the phone about some really intense things in the last week or two. And I just got to encourage you guys to look out and see you just like hands raised up, surrendering to God, worshiping God in the midst of your battle is so moving, right? Uh, you guys remember, maybe, maybe uh, remember from the worship series that sometimes our most powerful worship is like Paul when we're in prison, right? All right, so stand up on your feet, and I need you to cross sections, cross the great divide here, all right? We're going to give you two minutes. I know that's not enough time, but at least get the name, maybe a hobby or where they live. Well, good morning. At Rock of Grace, we are so happy to see you guys here this morning. And one of the things we talk about a lot is that we are leading people to follow Jesus together. If you could take a minute and fill out the digital connect card by texting us to new at Rock of Grace if you're new. The number is up there on the screen. And if you want to just take a minute and check out this video about a new church app. At Rock of Grace, we want to make sure that we can stay connected wherever we are. That's why we've partnered with the Church Center to serve as our new mobile app. With our new app, you will be able to stay up to date with all of our events, check your kids into our kids' ministry, sign up and stay connected with a life group, manage online giving, watch sermons, and more. Here's how you can get started. You can download the Church Center app in the Apple App Store or in the Google Play Store. Another way to get started is by opening your web browser on your phone and going to app.rockofgrace.org. From there, click the button for your type of phone, iOS for iPhones, and Android for Android phones such as Samsung and Pixel phones. This button will bring you to the right place to download the Church Center app. When you open the app for the first time, it will ask for your location to help you find which church you are a part of. You will find each of our Rock of Grace campuses within this app. Next, you just have to log in with your phone number and it will connect with your online giving account if you have already given your tithes or offering online or through our website. And that's it. You're on your way to stay connected wherever you go. Well, that is a really awesome thing that we have set up here for the church. And for example, one of the other things I want to tell you that it does, um, there are... Well, check it out, because this Wednesday, Pastor Mark has a new life group starting. So maybe check out this app, download it, and check it out. The next thing I'd like to tell you about is the father and son, or dads and sons, I guess it says, whitewater rafting trip. There are 11 going so far. There's nine spots left. And if you want to have some fun, check it out. Sign up for that. VBS is coming soon. You can register now for an outdoor adventure that you will never forget. It is June 21st and the 23rd at Big Oak Meadows. There's a table in the lobby that has information you can pass out to your friends, and it also has information on how you can help us cover the cost of this event so we can keep it a free event. Next Sunday, we're going to be recognizing seniors. <laughs> Happy is excited about that. You are a senior, but not quite that kind of senior. Anyway, <laughs> Let's be clear, seniors from high school. All right. So stop by the table in the lobby also. There you can pick up some cards for our seniors who are graduating from high school. Um, we would love for you to fill out these cards, bring them back next Sunday, so we can just bless them with words of encouragement and blessing as they move on to this next chapter in your life, in their life. So now Pastor Jordan is going to come up and give you another word. Give Ruth a hand. Isn't she awesome? Um, hey, we have a lot of opportunities for you to serve, and I want to connect the dots for you. Um, how many of you are our parents, and you love the fact that we have a children's ministry? Can you raise your hand nice and high? All right, we need you to help in Next Gen. Next Gen. In other words, we noticed just this last couple of weeks when all the phone calls and the texts were made, uh, we still had to go to all of our foster moms to get nursery care. So, how many realized? And I started looking. These are the foster moms who have four, five, six kids at home. So 
all the view uh, moms and grandmoms, listen, we need you. Can I help connect the dots too? How many of y'all would like to see this door open? Can I get a witness? Some of you like felt guilty about that. You're like, this is, this is not a moral issue. That's just a question. How many of you like to see this end door open? So when our greeter director called all the greeters, we only had one respond. And so this is becoming a bad trend. So we really need your help. To make ministries work, it requires people, requires serve teams. Amen? So if you want to see things like this door open, that means we need a greeter to open the door. So open that, uh, not open, but pick up that, uh, what is this called? Postcard on your seat. Go ahead, everybody, pick that up. Wave in the air like you just don't care. Back to my youth group days, sorry. I want you to see that you got kids ministry, right? You've got youth ministries, worship team, tech team in particular. We need help uh, running the cameras. And you don't have to have like some uh, degree, you know, from a, a tech school to do that. It's a real simple training. Ryan, everybody wave at Ryan. Why, Ryan, wave back if you don't mind. Yeah. He will show you exactly what to do, and he needs help. We need help. How many of you guys realize a church this size, it requires serve teams? So everybody's not along with me that you're hearing me. Your pastor, your shepherd is close to begging you this morning. We need help. Everybody say, I got it, pastor. All right. Serve.rockagrace.org or use this handy-dandy uh, postcard, and they're going to drop that in the offering. I forgot to ask Kathy. Where would you like them to drop that for you and Dave? Basket on the Welcome Center or that offering box? Everybody see that offering box in the back on your way out? It's got a big blue kind of offering sign on it. Drop it there. So you know what? I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I didn't even think about this. Let's put on some music. I'm going to give you a chance right now. Don't look at me like that. Look at that card and say, Holy Spirit, where, good song choice. That's right. Hey. You were buried in your sin before you chose to serve, but now you are risen and justified. Do you like how I did that? Dave's going to kill me for this. Don't let him see this. Don't let our executive pastor see that announcement. Everybody, seriously, take a minute, look at that card, and say, here's how I can serve. If you're kind of a people person, check that welcome team kind of love electronics, check tech team. We'll get back with you. We'll train you. Maybe you don't like kids, but kids like you. Check the first box. Come on. Come on, somebody. I've met some of you guys. You're like, I don't like kids. And then, and then they're like all like hanging on your shoulders. So <clears throat> Martin, <clears throat> Martin, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Martin, <clears throat> Ruth's husband, <clears throat> Martin, just clear my throat. All right. Well, let's pray over the offering, and then we'll jump into the word here. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for this church family. We thank you uh, just for your, your presence meeting us, Lord. It's such a beautiful thing, Lord. And even now, I'm, I'm a bit shaken knowing that you're, you're right here in our midst. So, Lord, help me to choose these words carefully, and I pray that your word would be spoken loudly and clearly, and every heart would be open. In fact, can you guys just put your hand on your heart? Um, Father, our heart is open to receive today. If you need to change our beliefs, Lord, if you need to change our behavior, the way we think, the way we live or act, Lord, we want to say we're open. Or we've not encountered a church service unless we've been a little bit challenged in what we're thinking or doing. So God, God challenge us. Make us more like you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are in a sermon series called Why? Why? And kind of getting back to, hey, why do we do what we do? And uh, I was rereading a book called Sa Sacred uh, and Sacrament. It's so powerful uh, a few months ago. And this was really getting me thinking, make sure we as a church understand what are some things that are so important to us. We talked about worship. Now we're going into three weeks on why. We said last week that the Bible, why we study the Bible, the Bible tells us who Jesus is as the good shepherd in John 10. How many of you were at the picnic? How many of y'all were at the picnic? We had a good time. Uh, so don't miss that next year. But we 
Yeah, we talked about Jesus being our good shepherd. Today, we're going to say truth. God's word brings truth to a confused world. Now, I happen to see a Babylon Bee article giving you some tips on reading the word. If you're not familiar with Babylon Bee, understand this is satire. So everybody say satire. <laughs> All right, these are not real tips. All right, so this is kind of a serious message, so I thought I'd open it up with some humor. Here we go. Eight tips to, you know, better your time in the word. Consider getting a hip translation with cool words like yeesh, all the middle schoolers. Come on, say it back with me, yeesh. All right. Get an audio Bible read by William Shatner <laughs> in the beginning. No. Make sure to set aside at least seven seconds to read the Bible. It's important to dedicate just a few seconds before you spend the rest of your day on social media. Spend most of your devotional time getting a good picture of your Bible next to a cup of coffee for your Instagram. <laughs> Oh, a couple of you ladies out there, I will not point at you right now. I'm just kidding. Look for creative ways to take verses out of context and make them all about you. Get creative. If you see a verse that's about ancient Israel, think, how can I make this about me? When your kids interrupt your Bible time, shout out, not today, Satan. <laughs> underline a book. <laughs> underline the entire book so no verse is left out. The more underlining you do, the more spiritual you are. Whenever you read a really convicting verse, make sure to apply it to someone else. For example, you feel a bit convicted? Just think about Becky from Bible study and how she needs to change her life, not you. All right. That is not good advice, but I thought y'all would enjoy that. All right. When we study God's word, what do we find? All right? We find truth for a confused we're going to talk about why the world and some signs of the confusion in our world. But I want to start out with this. When we study God's word, we see Jesus Christ, God's son, is the center of the Bible. The narrative of the Bible is the story of Jesus. It's the story of the gospel. Now, we might guess after reading the Bible that man keeps sinning and man keeps messing things up. Up. And so you might think, if I was God, I would just get rid of man. I mean, man, are, it's the problem, but you have to realize that's not God's nature. And God's great nature and love for man, love for me and you, he redeems us. And get this, he even partners with us to redeem creation. So we're going to come back to that throughout the sermon. Why is it important that you understand this? It's important for you to know that the story of the Bible is the story of Jesus. It's the story of redemption. That's why our slogan, our vision at Rock of Grace is we're leading people to follow Jesus together, right? The only hope for a confused and hurting world is the truth of God's word. Um, I haven't mentioned it maybe only twice um, since writing this book called Truth and Love, but it's available Amazon or whatever. All the proceeds uh, go to uh, missions, but it's available Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all that. And it talks extensively about the objectivity of truth. And that truth is not subject to your feelings. It's not subject, you know, to the weather. But the truth is always the truth. And the truth is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Some of my favorite verses, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But some of my favorite verses are 1 John 1, Colossians 1, John 1. Uh, these verses talk about the revelation of Jesus being the visible image of the invisible God and that he reveals truth to you. How many realize that in a, in a day like today, in 2021, we need truth, right? Because there's a lot of confusion. When we study God's word, we find again that God's story is always redemptive, that he gives the truth and like, let's say in the case of Judges, I was rereading the book of Judges this last week. And I was shocked again to see the cycle of sin. But I'd like to, you know, at first I wrote down the cycle of sin. I want to reword that, the cycle of redemption, right? How many of you ever read the book of Judges and thought this? They would be blessed by God, right? Because God just rescued them. After a time of blessing, they would forget that it was God who rescued them and provided for them. They would begin to sin and compromise and ignore God's ways. God would send a messenger to warn them of God's laws and to worship him and not the surrounding nations. They would then be blessed by God. 
after a time of blessing, they would forget that it was God who blessed them, and the cycle would repeat. How many of you guys have ever seen that in Scripture, right? People did what was right in their own eyes, judges said. We're going to come back to that next week. But this is what happens in a culture that crumbles when it has no moral compass. It does what's right in its own eyes. I mean, think about it. If I were to tell you it's right in my eyes to club you with a bat and take all your stuff, you might say, well, you can't do that. That's wrong. How many say that's wrong? Some of you are like, actually, that's a bit violent, you know. Um, I might say to you, well, why is it wrong? It well, just is. Well, why is it? Then you would have to admit that there is wrong and there is right. And if there's wrong and right, then there's evil and there's good. And if there's evil and good, then there's God and God's enemy, Satan. Right? At some point, we have to say, well, then what's the moral compass? This is why there's a statue of Moses still in Congress to this day, because our laws in the United States is based on Judeo-Christian values. There's a moral compass, right? There's a code of ethics given to us in the Bible. Of course, Jesus comes and he reveals an even stronger code, right? In the Sermon on the Mount, he says, hey, you've been told if you, if you uh, sleep, uh, adultery, if you sleep with another woman or another uh, man outside of marriage, right? Um, but I would say if you lust, you've already committed adultery. If you have anger in your heart, you've already killed. And so when society doesn't have a moral standard, it crumbles, and that is what is happening in America and all over the world. How many of you guys have seen a society crumbling? I mean, has anybody watched any TV or news in the last year and a half, right? We see the anger. We see the violence. We see the riots. We see uh, just the hatred. We see the shame throwing. We see the, uh, the accusations of, hey, I'm going to go back 10 years to look for something stupid you said when you were 16 and cancel you for the rest of your life. We see this idea of, I'm going to make sure I look more righteous by making you look less righteous. Yeah. Right? What? So society crumbles at the lack of a moral standard. So where does our standard come from? I'm glad you asked. God's word. Everybody say God's word. We really do live in a confusing time. I read a statistic two weeks ago that it's reported that American, this is going to be no surprise, Americans' trust in journalistic integrity is at an all-time low. Amen? I mean, literally, like, I don't think I, don't think I know one human now, one person that can turn on the news and actually trust, doesn't matter what station, you know you're watching some facts with a lot of opinion, right? It, so the, this, this idea of even trusting uh, what we're hearing, and it's not just that it's the laws that are signed, it's the, it's the norms, the cultural norms. Let me give you just one, uh, I'm gonna give you three signs, but let's just start with this one. The signs of confusion, sexual identity crisis. I want you to understand, church, I've had four conversations in the last six weeks. Four in the last six weeks. Outside, with people outside this church and, and, and families in this church. You know, people are hurting. Our young people are confused. They're sold a lie all the time. How many of you guys have seen it? And what makes me so uh, burdened down and feel the weight of what the, the lies that they are sold, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. Last week, I had already started writing this message, and um, I, I turned the TV on, and we're, we're watching something in an Orbitz commercial. Like, you're literally just selling plane tickets. Why can't we just sell plane tickets? You know, but like I said, it was 30 seconds of pushing a same-sex sexuality, a same-sex lifestyle. All 30 seconds. How many of you just raise your hand and say, there's a problem? There's a problem, right? And there's all kinds of things we can go to. Um, and, you know, we talked about this maybe a year ago, but I want to talk about this for about just 10 minutes. It's reported in a national study by the UCLA a percentage of teens between age 13 and 17 who were polled, thousands of them, spiked 
from 4% to 7.5% in 2015. And that's grown by 1% each year when asked the question, which of the following best describes you? And they checked lesbian, gay, bisexual, non-binary, or transgender. It's grown by 1% every year. How many would say we have a confused world? We have a confused world. The prince of the air, as he's called in the Bible, Satan is, is for now allowed to tempt the hearts of man to bring confusion lies. According to John 10, we said this last week, his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will play on the emotions and the hormones of a teenager. And you need parents and, and grandparents and those listening online, I hope you hear me today. I hope you hear me, because about a year ago when I preached on this, I, I probably received more emails than ever before saying, thank you for that scripture. Thank you for that piece of advice. In fact, when we end the sermon, I'm going to give you five tips of how to respond, how to respond to your grandchild or your child uh, who, who is saying that they identify in that way. So I, I, was, I often ask parents this question. dealt with this a little bit when I was a youth pastor. And now dealing with it more and more and more as society is constantly pushing and pushing this. Why do you think, I was praying, I was saying, Lord, why? Why such an agenda? Why do you think Satan wants to stop, right, a, a, a relationship between man and woman? Well, think about this. In Genesis, he says man and woman, right? And he says, fill the earth. And he says, you're going to multiply my Image. He wants to stop the image of God being populated on the earth. Come on, it's the same motive for abor abortion. You think that's weird? Are those two things tied together? It's the same motive. Think about it. This is why I tell kids often. Satan was kicked out of heaven. Right? He's kicked out of heaven. Took a third of the angels with him. Satan's trying to get back at God. He wants to get revenge at God. How does he get revenge at God? By attacking his special creation, you. You are his special creation, his joy. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And he wants to convince you that God did something wrong. He wants to convince you that God messed, messed you up, that God somehow made you different and not given you the same promises that he gives everybody else. Why Satan always attacks the word of God. Remember in Genesis, did God say? Satan always attacks the goodness of God and the word of God. Is everybody listening? Yeah. Amen. So why? It's important that you read the word of God and that you read the word of God to your kids. We're going to talk about that a lot next week. And listen, it's also important that you speak up. And there's, um, I've just seen in the last week, which it was just really remarkable, maybe because I was writing this sermon, so it was a little more prevalent in my mind. But you've seen um, even uh, parents go to school boards and say, hey, we are not going to allow this pornography to be in our students' uh, curriculum. And we haven't seen this uh, in Ohio, but there was multiple states who've come to them and said, hey, this is, off. This is what my kids are reading. Now, you have to understand, this is not new. Uh, I was five years into youth ministry. This is 10 years ago when a student in my youth group showed me in their book what they were given for required reading for AP English. And I drove my butt straight to the principal's office that day after some prayer. Thank you, Lord. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, calm me down. Make me, help me say the truth in love. And I was very kind, but I was also very clear. And I gave the principal some statistics because the book was about these are the benefits of same-sex relationships. That was literally, that was what it was all about. I talked to him as a pastor about my concern. I talked to him about the statistics of what happens when kids start doing that. I talked to him about the depression and everything else that rises. And he totally listened to me. I uh, he totally heard me out. And guess what? That book was removed. And so I'm not saying that to do this. I'm saying this. I was a little bit hesitant to go down there. How many of you guys have ever been hesitant to speak up? Because it's like, well, hey, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Hey, I don't know. And, and you know what? It's, it's time for the church to stop going, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, you do know. You do know. You have the word of God. You have truth. And if you don't want your kids to keep getting heard lies that are incredibly harmful for the rest of their life, you need to speak up. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. 
I want to say this, what I say every time this subject comes up. God knows what's best for you, and God wants what's best for you. That's why he's given you wisdom in his word. God knows what's best for you, and God wants what's best for you. You know, as a father of five, I know what's best for my kids that my six-year-old doesn't know, right? My eight-year-old doesn't, actually, I confuse their ages all the time now. The other day, I'm like, she's eight, and she goes, I'm nine. And then I said, she's 11, and Sailor goes, I'm 12. And I'm like, I don't know who they are, but they all live in my house, you know? I was trying, (laughs) I messed it all up. Even Eden, I'm like, she's five. She goes, I'm six. I was like, whatever. Anyway, (laughs) there's a lot of them there. But, um, (laughs) <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, I lost it. Um, yeah, I totally lost it. I'm going to go back to my notes. All right. Anybody want to help me out? It must have been amazing. It must have been so... Oh, God knows. Thank you, honey. Give it up for Danielle. Come on now. <laughs> I have one person listening to me. No. God knows what's best for you. So there's things where, like, you know, they want a second bowl of ice cream, a third bowl of ice cream. And I, no, right? Because I know what's best. And God is the same way. He puts in boundaries because he loves you. And you need to communicate that to your kids. He puts in boundaries because he loves you. God's word brings truth to a confused world. Can everybody say this with me? God's word brings truth to a confused world. You know, I was thinking about even the, the slogan, right, the, the, that pride. It's called Pride Month that we're celebrating. And isn't it neat that in God's sovereignty, I didn't think of that a couple months ago when we put this in here. And I love God's sovereignty. So why is it called Pride Month or Pride in the LGBTQ plus world? Because in pride, and hear me, I'm saying this in love. In pride, we say to God that we reject your design and we define ourselves. Let me say that again. In pride, we say we reject your design and we define ourselves. It's like the girl that wrote good girl or good gay girl, good God. She says she's interviewed. And she said, what I had to come to grips with is, yes, these feelings were, were real. And yes, these attractions were, were real to me. But I had to surrender those to God, just like every other person has to surrender their sin to God. And she, she said, it took me years to understand that. We have to surrender to God. Let's read a little bit of scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. And this is in the app. Well, the app is switching over this week. But I did put the notes in this week if you still use the Rock of Grace app in the notes section, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 15. Or do you know, or I'm sorry, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? All right, so let's pause for a minute because I want to make sure you hear me. All the adults, all the, all the tweens, you know, all the 30-something, 40, everybody just north of 40. Don't even raise your hand. Don't raise your hand, Paul. It's fine. All right, everybody hear me. Everybody hear me. God wants you to enter his kingdom. I don't want to read this verse and, and you think like, wow, that's no. God, wa- turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, say God wants you in his house. You got to know that. It's a big deal to me that we always communicate the motive of God, the love of God. By the way, God's motive is always love. Every time, every time. God's motive is always love. Look at this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So don't be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, drunkards, revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified by the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of God. How many of you, you used to be kind of greedy. You used to be kind of a reviler, right? You had attitude in your hearts, rebellion in your hearts, but God washed you clean. Come on, who's, who's been washed clean? And so I want to be clear that that is a word, that is a, that word homosexuality, while that's the first, you know, third of this sermon, you need to understand that it is one of many sins, All of these sins will keep you out of the kingdom of God. You've got to surrender these sins. If you say, well, no, this is is my money. God, you can't have it. Well, let's reread then. (laughs) Do you not know 
that those who are greedy, those who hold on too tight, right? But instead, if you say, God, not only is my sexuality yours, my money is yours. Everything is yours. That is the life of someone who is in the kingdom of God, period. That is the life of someone who's in the kingdom of God. And it is so much fun, by the way, I like to say this, to not be in control. Isn't that neat, right? God's in control. Say, aren't you worried if you give too much money or if you give too much control to God? No, no, no. God is in control. I'm just stewarding it. And so we have to take these things that we say, we identify ourselves. Well, I identify, if you say I identify as transsexual, I identify as non-binary, I identify as this. No, I, you don't understand, Pastor, I am driven to be successful in the corporate world. I am driven. That's who I am. You don't understand how I grew up. And all of these words come back to I and identify. What you're saying then is I'm not willing to crucify, to take up my cross and follow Jesus and identify with Christ. When Colossians 1.3 tells me this, I have been hidden in Christ. My identity is no longer my own. So you might say I identify. So I know well. I understand what you're saying. I understand you're saying, I feel this way, and I, I feel comfort in the tribe of these people. But I want to tell you something. Why we study God's word? We study God's word because it brings truth to a confused world. And you might say, well, I don't want to lay down my pride. I don't want to say I would rather be this way. Well, now you have a decision, right? Right? to admit this is my sin that I need to bring to the cross of Jesus Christ. In fact, at our worship night on July 6th, we're going to have a baptism. I can't wait to use that baptism. I hope like a third of y'all get baptized. I hope half of you guys. In fact, everybody just get in the tank at once. Come on, let's just jump in there. Like a Holy Ghost hot tub, just everybody just jump in. I could get awkward. I just said Holy Ghost hot tub. I need to stick to my notes. Okay. That baptism is going to be awesome on Tuesday. And some of you are going to say, you know what? I've been in church my whole life, but I've never surrendered this. I identify I'm a smoker. I am a smoker. You don't understand. My dad was a smoker. My grandma was a smoker. My grandpa was a smoker. I'm sorry, pastor. I'm a smoker. No, you're not. You used to be. Are you getting the message yet? You used to be. We have to take these things that we say, this is how I identify and say, no, I'm going to bring him to the cross because my identity is hidden in Jesus. Amen? Why do we see crime rising? In the words of Solomon, he would say, well, there's nothing new under the sun. Right? There's nothing new under the sun. I mean, crime is rising at an all-time high in, in uh, larger cities, but I don't want you to think like, well, that's over there. No. Let me say it like this. There's still a self-centeredness in all of us that we need to bring to Jesus. You know, there's a self-centeredness in all of us that you might say, well, I'm not committing a crime. I'm not, I'm not, you know, mugging someone, I'm not stealing what they have. But I am alarmed at an ever-increasing trend, even in Christianity, that is either overtly said or implied by some of our pastors and communicators. And if you're believing this idea that God just wants to make you happy and that God just wants to fulfill all your dreams, then you're not reading the Bible every day. Because when you read the Bible every day, Jesus says to follow me, take up your cross. You're gonna follow me, you wanna be my child? It's gonna hurt. He even says, some will hate you. He even says, some of you will have family that turn their back on you. We have four families in our Rock of Grace family now that have had their family turn their back on them because they say yes to Jesus. Now, some of you say, but maybe I've, you've never experienced that, but you need to understand that if your Christianity is not costing you, is not asking, if you don't feel God, saying, hey, let's crucify this part of your life. This is the way you identify. If you don't feel that, then I want to encourage you to get in the word of God. It's like the person that was over in my house on, on Friday. 
and he was saying, well, I, I love in your sermon, he, I was talking about the churches, and he just moved here, and uh, he said, you know, I want to feel challenged. He said, I know I'm in a good church when I feel a bit convicted. You know, it, it's, a, it's a problem either from here or there if you go out for two months in a row and you're like, everything's great, everything's great, <laughs> right? There's some times when God needs to speak to our heart and say, I've been believing a lie or I've been, I've been acting this way or acting rude or acting whatever. When we read the word of God, it reveals what's going on in our heart. It's truth that sets us free. The Holy Spirit should be challenging you every single day, every single day. And I wanna encourage you to make sure you read the word of God every single day, every single day. You have the same time, same place. Uh, you open your Bible and you ask God to speak to you. And when you're doing this with your kids, you know, I want to say this too. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. It's not so you can say like, I read a chapter every day. I'm the Olympian of Bible reading. That is not the goal. The goal is quality. You might read one proverb and God say you needed that. Right? You might be fighting with your parents. And, and sometimes I see more fighting happening with parents in people who are in their late 30s and 40s and you're facing some difficulty, you might open the Bible and say, honor your father and mother. Yeah. How many know what I'm talking about? You open the Bible, and the Holy Spirit's got a verse for you, right? right? It should challenge us. That's a, everybody say, that's a good thing. Good thing. Turn your Bibles to John 17. I know some of you might be thinking, John 17, you preach from John 17 like five times a year. Yes, I know. It's my fave. It's my favorite. I'm not going to put all of, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, Evie, and then I'm going to go back two pages because I want to get to this John 17. Hey, can you give it up for Evie and Ryan in the tech booth making it happen? <laughs> that would have been awesome if you just started playing your own music. Yeah. Like Ryan and Kurt, you <laughs> okay, here we go. John 17. When Jesus spoke these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Now, I want to warn you, this is a bit of a mouthful. So everybody, everybody give me your squinting focus face. Nailed it, Carrie. That was nailed. That's perfect. Just come on. Ready? Here we go. You have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given him. This is eternal life that they know you, the only God, only true God. By the way, that's a great one for memory verse. This is eternal life that we know Jesus, right? Amen. The true God, Jesus, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. So let's stop again. The word of God reveals truth to us. And so I want to just real quick, Jesus was glorified in heaven, right? He's always been, he will always be, and he humbly left heaven to come save you and me. Have we got it? Right? All right, so the glory we had before the universe existed. Everybody give me your best mind-blowing meme right now. Just, right? Brandon, you nailed it. Just, here we go. I have manifested your name to the people you gave me out of the world. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I want you to notice that word, your word. Now, they know that everything you have given is from you, for I have given them the words you gave me, and they have received them and come to know the truth. Everybody say truth. That I came from you, and you, and they have believed that you sent me. How many guys have believed that God sent Jesus? Amen? And if you haven't yet believed that, I'm going to give you an opportunity for that in just a few minutes. I am not praying for the world, but for those that you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours. All yours are mine. I am glorified in them. Wow. Did you know God is glorified in you? God's glorified just, just looking at you. Just looking at you, Randy. Just looking at you. He's glorified in you. I am no longer in the world. They are in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father, so keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one. This is why it's really powerful when we get together at Immerse or times of worship, when you have unity uh, all together. That's beautiful. 
Not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you in these things I speak, that they may have joy. Some of you say, I don't know why I don't have joy. Well, that means you got to get more truth. Let me say that again. Some of you say, I don't have a lot of joy lately. Well, then how have you been in the word of God? Right? Get in the word of God. Get the truth. Find the beauty of Jesus Christ. Look what he says. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Do you know there's times the world will hate you because of your simple allegiance to the truth? And we see that more and more and more. And I want to lovingly warn you and encourage you, Christians, that as time approaches the coming of Christ, you might be hated even more. So you're like, well, that's not a nice positive message from my pastor today. But can I get an amen? Thank you, Nicole. Can I get an amen? Because for real, you're going to have times in coming years where that's going to speed up. Where, there, where evil is called good and good is called evil. And for you to say, well, I want to protect this child, and they'll call you evil. They'll call you bigot. They'll call you uncompassionate for that. But you've got to know the word of God and stick to it. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. Listen how many times he says this. But that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world. Come on. How many of you have been saved by Jesus? One more time. You are not of the world. You're, you're in the world. But you're, you're just hanging out. You're on a trip, okay? You're on a journey. Yeah. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. I wish I could say this 10 times for you. I'll just say it a few. I don't want to annoy you, but I want to say this. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And there's so many times when someone has come into my office or called and you know, usually within that time of discussion, I'll say, you know what, let's go to Scripture. What does Scripture say about this? Have you gone to the Word? Jesus wants you to know the truth. Jesus is the revelation of truth. So what is our response? Our response is to surrender. All right, so we're going to go back um, to page 8 there, Evie, in the script there, page 8. So what does the Bible teach us All right, not just about who Jesus is, that he reveals truth, that he reveals it through his word. But what are some core things? What's our response? Number one, the Bible teaches that God's love is seen in Jesus. And I won't give you all the scriptures, there's so many. Number two, the Bible teaches that our response is to surrender in worship. All right, so let's recap what we did about 10 minutes ago. I surrender my right to be right. I surrender my right to lord something over my wife or my spouse. I surrender my pride, even if you say it's my LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ plus pride, whatever it is, so I surrender that to Jesus. I surrender money I don't need, the idea of excess. If I have excess, I'm going to give it away because of what I read in the Bible. That I'm a descendant of Abraham. I'm a royal priesthood who provides for others. Come on. That was a little quieter on that one. Everybody say amen. Amen. I surrender sexual pleasure. I don't need pornography. I don't need an excess of others to make me happy. I bring all of that to the cross and admit my need for a saving God. Amen? Amen? Number three, the Bible teaches that the Lord opens the heart to believe. The Lord opens the heart to believe. In other words, I love this. Well, Alistair Begg, he said this, speaking of, the, of uh, how someone comes to salvation. I was listening to his podcast about a month ago. I wrote this down. The Lord opens the heart to believe. In other words, you can't think your way towards God. You can't think your way. Everybody say this with me. You can't think your way towards God. Right? And if I can elaborate on that, you can't work your way towards God for you think of the works. But, but what he was saying is we don't come to this idea of I'm going to choose to be a better person. No, it's the grace of God convicting us of our sin, our need to say my feelings, my ident- however I identify, I lay that down and admit my sin. Let me give you a story from the Bible. Acts 11, I'm sorry, Acts 16, 11. 
This is about Lydia. I want you to listen to this verse. It's about the fifth verse down. Setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage and following that day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city in Macedonia. We remained in the city some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate to the riverside. We were supposed to have a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. After she was baptized, her household as well, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And what we infer from this, they actually ended up gathering there a lot and a lot of them gathered there. So we can infer she, she was wealthy and had a big enough house to have them there. They talked about her being an entrepreneur and God blessing her. But look at this, the Lord opened her heart. How many of you guys remember that verse? No man comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. This is why, I want to connect this. This is why it's important that you pray. That you pray. You have someone who's confused. You have someone who is confused about their sexual identity or just confused. And they're hurting. And they're trying to uh, maybe always impress you with their position or the money they have or some sort of tangible thing right? Then, and you see that, you see that over and over, you have an opportunity to pray for them and ask God to speak to them. Ask God to speak to them. Amen? Amen. It's such a beautiful thing. Here we go. Number four, the Bible teaches, you guys doing okay? It's like a mini Bible college this morning. Everybody say, I'm okay. I know, I talk fast. Here we go. The Bible teaches us that once saved, we work with God to redeem mankind. Isn't that so cool? Right? So it's like we're little Christ that Scripture indicates. Christ lives in us by the Spirit's power. Paul says we are ambassadors. All right? Number five, you can't think your way towards God. Similar to point two, inward renewal is important. Everybody hold your heart like this, right? Inward renewal. It's God making you born again. Number six, being like Christ is not about listening to what a pastor says. Now, you might say, well, that's a, you're a pastor. That's an odd thing to say. Do you know why I say that? Because even though I study really hard, even though I take a couple days to prepare my sermons for you, there are times when I might get it wrong. There, there, there might be a time 20 years from now where I lose my mind. I hope that never happens. But Right? Thank you for that. Always on time. The chief goal of man is to become like Jesus and to worship him, right? And so you can never, what am I saying? You can never exchange, I hope, I hope you hear this. You can never exchange a sermon for your time with God. Can I say that again? Don't just binge out on sermons. Your time with God. I want to close with an illustration. If everybody could stand up to your feet. I want to, we're going to play a song here in just a moment. In fact, you can start it real softly. I have a compass on my uh, desk upstairs that I got at a garage sale because my wife's a garage sale fanatic. And, uh, and um, it's this really cool nautical compass. It's like cherry and brass. and I find it so interesting. I remember one day I was looking at it in my office and I was sitting there. I'd lean back and I was praying and I was thinking and the compass caught my eye. That's like the word of God. Okay? If you say, I'm going to go true north. Well, here's the thing. If you're on a journey and let's say you're going to go 5,000 miles, Right? Let's say you're going to go 5,000 miles. If you say, well, to get there, it looks like I've got to go true north. So you start walking, right? This is before cars and Uber. Come on. You're just walking. Well, if you don't look at that compass for a week, a month, you're going to end up way off course and wasting a lot of time, and you might end up in some hurt. Come on. I'm trying to help you this morning. The compass is the word of God. You come back to it every morning, and the Holy Spirit might say, hey, you know, you were a little off yesterday. 
Hey, you were a little five degrees northwest. And I'm not even going to point because my sense of direction is horrific, if you know me. Like, I'll be like... Anybody got a bad sense of direction? I can tell you what I'm going to be doing in 10 years from now, but I, I can't tell you where north is. I still think it's that way, but I've told it's that way. Is it that way, Jim? Thank you. Appreciate that. That compass, that compass, listen, if you don't look at it and you just go for a month, and then suddenly you look at it and you're like, what happened? I hope you're hearing me this morning because a lot of people, they go for months and they go for years and then they knock on a pastor's office and they say, what happened? Look at the compass. Look at the truth. What is the word of God telling you? And if you'll go to that every day, the Holy Spirit might say, hey, you're just a, you're just a couple degrees off. You're pretty rude to your employer yesterday. And that employer, he's paying you every week. You say, oh, you know what? I need to, I need to go apologize to my employer. You might open the word and, and there's a verse in there. You read in 1 Corinthians 13, right? And suddenly the Holy Spirit says, you were listing a list of wrongs to your wife yesterday. Why don't you go apologize? And boom, that needle goes back. Amen? I want you to bow your heads this morning. I'm going to ask you, if you've never received Jesus and you've heard me say today, the Bible tells you the story of Jesus, that he left his throne in heaven to die for your sins. We've had people coming to Jesus a lot in the last few months, and I want to tell you, you can be added to the family of God today. You can join the family of God. You don't have to stand on the outside wondering, if I'm not good enough, I'll never be included. No, none of us in this room, friend, are good enough. We simply said yes to the grace of God. So if you want to say yes to the grace of God and ask him to forgive you of your sins, would you raise your hand right now? If you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and choose to follow him, can you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Amen. I'm believing. Amen. I see that person. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're all going to pray this with, with a young lady in the church today. We're all going to pray this prayer of salvation. Can we do this all together? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son. You love me that much that you looked past my sin. And you saw my potential to be your child, to sit at your table, and to be called by your name. I lay down my pride, my sin, my arrogance, every mistake. Wash it away. Wash it away with the blood that you shed on the cross. Jesus, be my brother. Heavenly Father, be my Father. I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? We have a new family member. Come on. In the family of God. I just want to leave you with this. I know I, I, know I pre preached a lot of content today, probably too much. But I really hope that you just take the word of God and really value it. Really value it. If it's getting dusty, listen, this is the week that changes. You dust it off and you say, God, I'm going to commit to knowing you. You'll be glad you did. Amen? All right, have a great week.